Masking is an important technique for isolating parts of your image in Affinity Photo. In this video, we'll look at hue masks and see how they can make this process easier and more precise. So let's jump in. What's up guys, it's Trent, and today we're talking about hue range masks in Affinity Photo. This is one of the live layer masks that can dynamically change itself based on the content of your image. So let's start with a basic example of how it works. And I have these two rainbow gradients here. The top one is gonna be the example I'll be applying the mask to, and I'll just keep this bottom one down here as a reference so you can see what the top one looked like originally. So I'll select my top rainbow image here. And to create a hue range mask, what you do is you right click on the mask icon here. So I'll right click on this. And now I have this option for hue range mask. So let me click on that. And you can see right away that things started to disappear. So what's happening is I have this color wheel here and these dots are defining the range of my mask. I can actually click preview here. And you can see that this is the part of my image that is being revealed and the gray is kind of fading out a bit. So I'll unclick preview. And what I can do is I can move this color around and I can choose which part of the color band I want to select. So I can go to the blues, I can go to the greens, I can go to the oranges as well. And if I click preview again, this is basically what's happening. Another option we have is inverting our mask. So I can click the invert output button here. So I'll click that. And I can see the opposite is happening. The colors that are selected are being hidden. So if I move this around, I can change the band of colors that are being hidden. I'll put it back to normal here. Now the question is, what do these dots here actually mean? Well, the area between the two middle dots is going to be fully solid. So if I preview, these two middle dots are my pure white area. And then what it's gonna do is it's gonna fade out to the outer dots in either direction here. So you can see my mask, it's fading to black over here. Now you can modify these dots, of course. I can drag this in to make it tighter here. So this side is getting a little shorter. I can do the same with this one. So if I unclick preview, that's what's happening with my mask now. I can also drag them further out. And if I show you my mask, that's what it looks like now. I can also extend the middle of my mask. So let me drag this outer one out here and I'll pull the middle one out this way. So you can see I've increased the range of my mask here. And of course I can still rotate it around. Now you can see these curves here. This is actually adjusting the fall off between these outer points. So let me click preview again. If I click one of these curves, you can see this straight slope here is what makes it gradually fade away. Now as an extreme example, I can make it very sudden. I can make it completely sharp. And if I unclick preview, you can see I have a very sharp edge to my mask. Same thing with the other side. I can make it very sharp. And I can move my mask around and I can get very precise color selection. Usually with a realistic image like a photograph, you're gonna wanna have some type of gentle curve. So you can select one of these pre-made curves here or just use the straight line curve like that. And then when you move it around again, you can see it's a smooth curve again. Now we also have this ability to blur our mask. So I'll drag it up to something extreme. I'll pull in these a little bit. And you can see we're getting blurred on all sides over here. Now, one thing you can do is choose these colors with the picker tool here. So I'll click picker. Now I'll click around here. This will be the blue area, as you can see from the one below it. If I click here, it'll select that area. If I click over here, it selects that red area there. So when you have an image, this can be a great way of selecting a color with this picker option here. Now, the really cool thing about hue range masks is that we can combine them with adjustment layers. So here I have this image and let's say I want to target the yellow of the bike here. I want to do something with it. I want to change it somehow. Well, all I can do is I can create a hue range mask. So I'll right click on the mask tool. I'll click hue range mask. Now this is a good example of when to use the color picker. So I'll choose picker and then I'll click down here. And you can see we've done a pretty good job of isolating our yellow. Now, one cool thing with the hue mask is that if you look at the layer stack here, the color here shows what color you're targeting. So if I move this around, the color will actually change there. So it's kind of convenient, nice little thing to remember. So let me close this. I'll turn it off for a moment. So let me create an HSL adjustment. So I'll click this button here, adjustment, then HSL. And now what I can do is I can attach this hue range mask to the HSL layer. So I did that there. Now, right now the mask isn't on. Let's just use the HSL adjustment by itself. So if I click it, I can drag around here and you can see my whole image just starts to change color. However, if I turn on the mask, now you can see it's just limited to a certain area so I can rotate the color around. And for the most part, it's just limited to the yellow on the bike. So I think this orange looks kind of cool. It actually kind of matches the other handle better. We can adjust the saturation, of course, dial it up, dial it down. Now, when we're doing the hue mask, you probably noticed something, which is that the mask is far from perfect. 
So if you look at the buildings in the background, you can see our HSL adjustment is still affecting them. So there's a couple of different ways we can deal with this. For one thing, our hue range mask can actually be manually adjusted. So if I select the paintbrush and I select black, if I go into my hue range mask, I can actually paint over here and I'm basically getting rid of that effect. Let me undo that. Another thing I do is just add a mask above it. So if I click mask layer here, this is just a normal mask. So now I'm on my mask here. If I paint black, that will affect the layer below it. So it's taking out that reddish tinge there. And you can manually clean up your image that way if you didn't get a good selection with just a hue range mask. If you have any questions about hue range masks, feel free to leave a comment below. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.